In this episode, we're going to cover the Mac Arena launch, amended rules, Oracle changes, a article about the core 2021 set design with Mark Rosewater, and finally, magic and mental health. Please stay tuned. This is Chad, and welcome to Oathbreaking News. I make Magic the Gathering and Oathbreaker content, and if that's what you're into, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. In our first story, I'm going to cover the launch of Arena on the Mac platform. As with all launches, I would like to thank Wizards of the Coast and congratulate them on the attempt, but launches never go as planned, and many people had trouble accessing Arena in the early days. On the bright side, Magic the Gathering content creators and other Magic the Gathering community members came out to try to help get their friends online and playing. One such example is April King. She even posted a fix for Magic Arena on MacBook. I'm going to post a link to April's Twitter page, and I think it would be a great idea if you followed her. Next up, I'm going to briefly cover all of the Oracle rules changes. They are in order. I'm going to put the full article below in case you want more details, but I just want to cover them very briefly. The first major change is now you decide which player is going first before you shuffle your deck. That is to help with discerning who is the active player and who is the non-active player for triggers and abilities. This is mostly in result to the companion mechanic. The next one is, is a new exception to what objects are controlled has been added. The sixth exception is mana abilities, which don't use the stack but are abilities that can instruct you to do something. The next change is about the excess damage rule, and it is updated to refer specifically to lethal damage. For more details, again, link in the description. They've added a new Planeswalker type for Basri, Ket. We're getting a new creature type that everybody is super excited about with dogs, and it is going to replace the creature type Hound. There have been some pretty extensive updates to how Panharmonicon triggers and how it affects other cards. Mostly they just wanted to clarify and make the rules easier to use. They updated uh, wording to add the word time in order to fix a typo in M21. As many people already know, Mill has now joined our list of evergreen keyword actions. It's part of a list of 30 keyword actions, and it is going to have a trickle-down effect, so now the dredge keyword will be updated just to use Mill instead of a lot of other words. A special note here, Mill is specifically taking cards from the top of your library and putting them in the graveyard. If an effect involves you having to reveal those cards, that is not a mill effect. The state-based action rule has actually had to be cleaned up and extended to allow for additional rules. I can't possibly cover that here. We also have a new rule concerning commander's state-based action. When a commander would move to a graveyard or exile, you get one chance to move it to the command zone. The old replacement effect no longer applies to dying or getting exiled, so your commander can now die a whole lot. I do hope we'll see the Rules Committee for Oathbreaker's commentary on this particular rule. We have an update to the morph mechanic and to face down creatures in general. If a morph creature would die, if it would leave the battlefield, or if you lose the game, you have to reveal that creature. This rule is an update for what happens when you have a face-up creature that has a face-down creature floating inside of it thanks to the new mutating mechanic. You still have to reveal the face-down component when that creature would be removed from play or in the event that you died. There's been an update to how the Roman numerals work on Saga cards so that they're a little bit easier to understand. There's an updated rule where if a card would be exiled or put into a graveyard and you have merged that permanent like you would through the mutate mechanic, all of the cards and tokens related to that go to the same zone. So if you have a mutated permanent that has tokens or any other things in it that would be exiled, it all goes to exile. If it would go to the graveyard, all those cards go to the graveyard. And that's going to end it for the Oracle changes. Again, there will be a comprehensive link in the article I have taken this information from. Next, I would like to very briefly talk about an Odds and Ends Course Set 2021 article posted by Mark Rosewater. If you've ever wanted a look inside the heads of Magic Designers for a particular set, 
this is a good article for you. What Mark has done in this article is he's allowed Magic the Gathering players to reach out to him via Twitter and ask him questions to which he responds to the best of his ability. And if that's the type of thing that interests you, certainly check it out. I will put a link in the description. Next up, I would like to talk about Magic the Gathering and mental health in our community. Recently on Twitter, it was announced that a longtime pro gamer, Byron Reckful Berenstein, has passed away. This is heartbreaking, and many members of the Magic the Gathering community that knew this pro player about their own struggles with mental health and how this could possibly be affecting them and what they've gone through in the past. I think this is an excellent time to address mental health just in the broad scheme of things. A lot of things are happening that we don't see below the surface of somebody, and sometimes just taking a moment and reach out to your friends will not only help them, but will help everyone. I am going to place in the description of this video, and probably on screen here too, the suicide prevention hotline number. I'm also going to put its link in the description. If you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to your friends in the community. Everyone does want to be here for you, as evidenced by the public outcry on Twitter. Finally, I'd like to do just some super brief channel news. The channel has started a collaboration with the Oathbreaker Thoughtcast. Please check out the link in the description to our first collaboration video. There will be more in this series as my schedule clears up. Now, you can help out the Signature Spellbomb by telling us what we can provide to you as a community. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you. I couldn't do this without you, and I wouldn't. And I hope I don't see you in the headlines.